There we go. A Vinnie Paul video. And publish. All right. Fucking righteous. I'm really excited for that Vinnie Paul video. Uh, pretty cool. Pretty unique. What if we'll get any attention? What if it does get attention? What if somebody sees my other videos? Am I metal enough? Any spoilers? Go over to Ida's channel to see the video. It's ingenuous in existence to release. No! No! I am metal. I am metal enough. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm your host, Jaquel, the world's worst YouTuber. Today, I want to talk about metal. See, I uploaded that Vinnie Paul video, which at this point is probably the last one that I uploaded, and I figured that it would be something that would be nice and unique and be a thoughtful memorial for somebody that is such a, it's such the center, an icon of heavy metal that millions of people know who he was. Vinnie Paul Abbott was and will always be one of the top metal icons of all time. So that's why I figured let's do something a little bit different. Let's do something that's not the drum covers and the best of compilations, the everything, the usual. Something that's a little bit different. My anxiety began to play with my mind. See, I became worried that some big metal badass was going to come up, see that video, and just be like, Huh, this guy isn't a real metalhead. Especially regarding the fact that this channel is my channel, and it's not only about metal. It's not only about music at all. I have other things, other interests. So, maybe in some people's eyes, that would make me less of a metalhead than other people. So, I asked myself... Am I metal enough? Regardless, I decided to make this video to address that question and develop and propose a critical analysis for a couple of questions such as what is metal and what makes somebody a metalhead. As the gears started turning and ticking, I got really excited about this one, so I wanted to do it properly. So I actually got around to writing a script for it. Hey guys, writing a script. Now to avoid a long diatribe and retelling about the history of metal and how it started, which is something that you can just go on YouTube and type it in the search bar, or go on Google and type it in your search bar, there are other ways that you can find this information. So instead of getting into the history and spending a very long time talking about the history, I decided to make a list of what I feel is generally accepted as to what makes metal, metal. <clears throat> the music. Fast, loud, and heavy. Which includes double bass drums, galloping, chugging, rhythmic guitars, soloing and standout pieces on the lead guitar, vocals, either singing, screaming, or both, that nonetheless convey power and emotion, lyrics that contain dark themes ranging from emotional pain to horror-esque bloody tales, or even worship and reverence for Satan. Also is oftentimes politically charged and always opinionated. As much as that is well and good, it's not just the music that attracts people to heavy metal. It's also the presentation and the attitude. The attitude. Taking a stance against mainstream and pop culture. Valuing individual and person individuality and personal liberties. Thinking for yourself and critical thinking. An extreme distaste and vehemence towards those who would tell them what to do or put them down. 
being flagrantly and flamboyantly proud in who they are and what they stand for. In general, being loud, proud, and willing to do whatever they want, whenever they want. As you can see here, there's plenty for a disenfranchised youth to be attracted to this kind of music. Hell, what person, even as adults, doesn't have that desire to have a voice and to be Hell, what person, even as an adult, doesn't desire to have a voice and to be heard? Since its inception, rock and roll and heavy metal have been a counter culture. This can, and oftentimes, creates the feeling that heavy metal is a sort of members only club. As it is, many metalheads will sort of grill or quiz a new person or somebody that doesn't look metal. This is not exclusive to heavy metal. We've all seen the memes, we've all made the jokes, you see somebody wearing your favorite artist's merch, oftentimes your first instinct is to just go ahead and say, oh yeah, you really like them? Name three of their songs before their breakthrough album. Don't get me wrong. If you are wearing a band t-shirt, for the love of God, all things holy and unholy, please at least listen to that band. I feel that the reason that many metalheads do this is to make sure that some random person is not inaccurately and falsely representing the values of heavy metal to the rest of the world. Hell, even I'm guilty of it from time to time. I'm walking around the mall and I see some teeny bopper, yuppie preppy type we wearing Hollister and carrying around a Gucci bag wearing a Slipknot t-shirt. I have to fight the urge to get triggered and that winds up being internalized and I wind up rolling my eyes into the back of my fucking head hard as fuck. But I do try to keep it to myself because maybe this person isn't a metalhead. But they do actually enjoy Slipknot. Who am I to judge? Some people lack that self-control and take it an extra step or 15 steps too far. Example, a seasoned and well-knowledged metalhead may see a person who doesn't appear to be a metalhead claim they listen to one of the bands that they truly enjoy. So regardless of what they intend to sound like or actually sound like, how it comes across tends to be more like this. Oh yeah? You like Metallica? What year did James Hetfield burn his arm in a freak pyrotechnic accident, and who replaced him on guitar for the rest of the tour? Meanwhile, you're sort of just sitting there like, Bruh, all I said was I like Metallica. But Dad, you've been saying the word counterculture quite a bit. What exactly does counterculture mean? Ah, excellent question, my ten-month-old son, who is well-worded and inexplicably has a British accent. A counterculture responds to popular and mainstream ideas and opinions. Then they grow around and become the antithesis of what mainstream culture and ideologies represent. As exposition for a theory that I have, I'm going to offer a tad bit of history. See, back in the 70s, the punk scene was being infiltrated and taken over by new wave synth pop. And the mainstream population was considering bands like Blondie and the Eurythmics as punk, when neither of these bands are punk at all. Then, very similarly in the 80s, with the advent of MTV and the mass production of music videos, Hair and glam bands that seemed less talented, less extreme, and much more disingenuous were being assigned to major labels getting much more attention and making much more money. Granted, several of those glam and hair metal bands are now considered metal and generally accepted as such, such as Motley Crue, Bon Jovi, Quiet Riot, Guns N' Roses, the list goes on. Meanwhile, the underground was furious 
as their favorite bands that they felt were more talented, faster, heavier, and more extreme were not getting the recognition they felt that they deserved. So this was really a slap in the face to the fans of the underground metal scene. Not just that these effeminate, makeup-wearing, grown men were stealing the scene, but that they felt like these bands were misrepresenting their treasured music and giving the wrong idea to the mainstream population. What made it worse was that since these heavier and faster bands were underground, they didn't really have a voice, especially since it was before the internet was really a thing, if at all, TV and radio ruled the narrative. See, I feel like this is the mindset that has carried on through the generations of metalheads up until today, and probably will for the rest of metal history. The metalhead wants to be certain themselves that this new person actually holds the values of metals and that they are properly representing metal to the mainstream population. Which, to an extent, is fine and all. I completely agree with that myself. However, some of these guys rise to the level of being what we call a metal elitist. These elitists set up strict prerequisites in their own mind that if somebody or something doesn't check every single one of these numerous boxes, it means that they aren't really metal. This includes new bands and old bands new music and more than anything else, other metalheads. And these elitists, they become so militant, so headstrong, and so unwavering. It is as if it is their holy duty to defend what they believe to be real metal. All the while they are so convinced that they forget and lose sight of the fact that this is just their opinion. Yet this is something that only a small percentage of metalheads are actually like. Which is why I feel the need to differentiate between a metalhead and a metal elitist. Elitists are sort of like the equivalent to the Westboro Baptist Church. Loud, obnoxious, boastful, in your face, extreme in their beliefs. And because of that, they are the loudest ones and they are heard first, and they falsely represent the rest of the community when the rest of us aren't like that at all. In reality, they represent the worst of us. So to say that all metalheads are like this is grossly inaccurate and completely unfair because that's simply not the case. At this point, I must admit, in the past, I have been exactly that, a metal elitist. When I first started going to local hardcore and deathcore shows, I was completely taken aback by the sheer and brazen disregard for what I consider to be the core tenets and intrinsic values of live shows specifically regarding those surrounding the mosh pit. For more information about how I feel about that, go ahead back to almost the beginning of my channel and check out my, uh, what was it? Hate moshing, an angry rant. Or Glenn Fricker has a much better quality video and shares many of the same sentiments that I do. For over a year, I went on a complete and total tirade over social media to people around me and anybody I felt would listen, going around saying, oh, this isn't real metal. They, they, they fucking, these fucking douchebags. This isn't real metal, they're ruining. Then one day, my buddy Avery sat me down and said to me, look, metal has evolved in the pursuit of trying to be heavier, faster, and louder the result was producing and creating the core subgenres. Then he proceeded to burn me more than two dozen albums for me to listen to. At the end of the conversation, he closed it off by saying, don't let the assholes from this one scene change your opinion and make you think differently about the music itself. So you know what I did? I lightened the fuck up. And now I really enjoy many, if not most, of the core subgenres and the delineation thereof. Some of the first bands that I actually picked from that collection were bands like Parkway Drive, My Children, My Bride, Animals as Leaders, Mashuga, Stick to Your Guns. The list goes on. Like I said, he burned me about two dozen albums from his collection. What I learned then was that by being so rigid, 
and being so close-minded about what metal really was, I was too worried about definitions. And I felt the need to defend those definitions. What I was really doing was I was cheating myself out of listening to good fucking music. Don't get me wrong. I still despise hate moshing or what is now considered to be crowd killing, and I feel like it's needlessly destructible and harmful to people who just want to enjoy a show. It ruins reputations, shut down venues, and limits opportunities for local bands to get gigs and to get recognized. All it is is doing a destructive disservice to the bands that you're supposed to be representing. The other thing that I learned that I took away from what Avery actually said to me was music evolves over time. Think about it. Do you really want music today to sound exactly as it did in the 80s? What if every metal band that came out today still sounded like the Big Four, Anthrax, Megadeth, Metallica, and Slayer? You would probably be very unenthused, bored, and might even continue to complain about how these new bands are just ripping off the Big Four. So, just like all things in this world, over time, things change. And we all know that resisting change is one of the greatest philosophical endeavors in all of human history. Because we don't like it. But without that evolution, we wouldn't have other subgenres like folk metal, pirate metal, Viking metal, black metal, death metal, technical melodic death metal, new metal, anything that is generally accepted into the pantheon of what metal is, is still all a deviation from OG metal. The newer metal, such as hardcore, post-hardcore, metalcore, deathcore, slam, beatdown, all of the other subgenres that I don't even know what the hell they are are all simply the natural progression and evolution of metal. And hey, continue to dislike it. Go right ahead. Nobody's asking you to. You're not required to. Especially with such a large majority of the fans being either whiny little scene kids or macho fucking douchebags. I get it. I understand. You don't want to be associated with them. All I'm saying is, quit telling people that it isn't metal. Christ Almighty! If I genuinely enjoy listening to three or four Black Veil Bride songs, that doesn't make me any, me any less metal. If I admit that my first favorite band was Creed, and I still listen to them on occasion for the sake of nostalgia, that doesn't make me any less metal. Though Scott Stapp's voice is one of my favorites to make fun of. Can't find a rabbit on my creed, yeah. Lost in a card and creed, creed, yeah. But that brings up another interesting philosophical think tank. In the endeavor to make music heavier, faster, louder, and more extreme, we have almost run out of what we are capable of doing. We've almost run the course of human capability. Like, for real, how much faster and heavier can you get? We've got virtuosos like John Petrucci, Petrucci and Yngwie Malmsteen. We have ridiculous heavy subgenres such as slam, beatdown, and God knows what else. Eight, nine, ten string guitars, 32 string bass guitars, screaming styles such as false chords and tunnel throat that doesn't even sound human anymore. Don't get me wrong. If it's done well, I dig it. I fucking enjoy it. But how much heavier can you get? How much heavier can you get before it all blends together and sounds the same? The same muddled jumble of slams and breakdowns that wind up just being one gigantic bass tone. Winds up sounding something a little like... Wow, that made me dizzy. In today's heavy metal music, there isn't a lot of room left for more extreme. Hell, I'm not the only person that shares this sentiment. Rob Flynn and Sid Wilson also have recently, within the last couple of years, been saying the same fucking thing. There isn't much left to do. We have to bring in other influences now. That is the impasse that we have reached. Now we have bands like Oakley Doakley, a band that is metal and completely inspired by Ned Flanders of The Simpsons. We have a death metal band, I, what, what was it, like Blade Beak or something like that? It's a death metal band, fronted by a fucking bird. 
The birds sing is death metal. We now have bands such as Tanger Cavalry, which is a Mongolian folk metal band. They use classical instruments of Mongolian heritage and they throat sing along with the guitar. I love it! It's fucking awesome! If you haven't heard of them, go listen to their song Warhorse. It's fucking amazing. I love that song. Here's some food for thought. Legendary acts and famous rock stars like Slayer, Rob Zombie, Anthrax, Corey Taylor, James Hetfield, and Randy Bly of Lamb of God, and yes, I said Bly because that's how he told us to pronounce it in the interview with Graham Hartman when he did the Wikipedia Fact or Fiction for Loudwire. They are all endorsing bands like Baby Metal because it is so different. It's fresh. It's unique. It is a fun and whimsical bl blend of heavy metal and Japanese culture. And most importantly, they don't take themselves too seriously. That is also why I feel like the band Ghost has received so much critical acclaim in the last couple of years. I have seen so many freaking Ghost patches sewn right in there right next to somebody's Slayer patch on their battle vest. When I first heard Ghost, I thought it sounded like Scooby-Doo chase music. It took me a while to get into them because I didn't get why so many metalheads were such big fans of something that was so unmetal. Eventually I bought their Meliora album Hang on. Meliora album. And it grew on me. It grew on me, and I fucking love this album. It's one of my favorite albums of the last five years, ten years. Top five, definitely. However, I openly admit that I listen to music that isn't only metal music. Hell, I even screamed and rapped for a band with my brother that was a hip-hop heavy metal mashup type of shit. I'm a game shit, shipping nothing to the max on me zags like they're getting stacks. I ain't a fool, this a fantasy, ain't no fucking back. Sit back, watch it stumble as you fall, y'all's truly kill them all. So it may be just a tad bit easier for me to get into music that is a little more unmetal. But then it dawned on me, it wasn't the sound that mattered. Well, it did just that it wasn't exactly the main all-pervading factor about their entry. Let's go back over the list from the beginning of the video and apply that to Ghost. This Ghost, fast, heavy, and loud. Fast, about half the time. Heavy, eh, not necessarily. Loud, they sound good loud, but then again, that's probably the same songs that are fast. Does Ghost use double bass drums? Not really. Galloping, chugging rhythm guitars. Sometimes, not always. Does the lead guitar include soloing and standout pieces? More often, not always. But it's always good and talented, nonetheless. And catchy! Are the vocals either singing or screaming that nonetheless convey power and emotion? Yes, but not screaming. Kind of whining. Very melodic, often haunting. But they serve the purpose of the music and they serve it very well. Do the lyrics include dark themes ranging from emotional pain to horror-esque bloody tales or worship and reverence of Satan? Only one of those. Tobias Forge? I swear to Baphomet that you are romantically involved with the fucking devil himself. And I mean in the most biblical of ways. He is. He is the shining in the light without whom I cannot see. He is the insurrection. He is spite. He is the force that made me be. He is. Nostro despater, despater? Nostro alma mater. He is. Dude's got a hard on for Satan. So, they missed the mark on a lot of points. They even lead towards, like, 80s pop at times. If you don't believe me, go ahead and take another listen to the song Square Hammer. That's, like, seriously? That song has got the Eurythmics written 
all over it. The only thing that really saves that song from being a complete and total 80s pop song is the guitar, which on that song is actually exceptional compared to a lot of the other stuff that they do. So what is it that makes them so goddamn appealing? Here's my theory. It's their image and presentation. Seriously, Tobias Forge's characters as Papa Emeritus and the, now the Cardinal really creates a sense of mystery and creepiness and general spookiness that old metal really tended to encapsulate. Then with the nameless ghouls being that they all wear the same mask and have been swapped out several times, it adds to the mystery and spookiness and the overall spectacle. It takes away the focus from the individual artist and puts it on the music, the performance, and the overall theatrics, which is exactly how Tobias had intended it. Being that Ghost is still decidedly hard rock, albeit with sometimes folk inspirations and some 80s pop influences, they hit all of the marks for imagery. And they generate that safe kind of fear similar to what one experiences when on a roller coaster or watching a horror movie. They are unique in their appearance, that they are obviously stand out, demand attention for the way that they look, and they are instantly recognized. And they've even won a Grammy, which sort of bends the idea that metal needs to be underground in the way, and to, to be a counterculture. They've won a fucking Grammy. So is it that they are a mainstream metal band? Or is it that in spite of being metal, that they still beckon mainstream attention? I'll let you decide. Point is, Ghost is my proof in the pudding. The scene has changed. The lay of the land is no longer the same as it was before. And that is okay. There's more now out there for you to enjoy if you let yourself. Your favorite bands from before are still there. Many of them still making new music, even if that music isn't exactly what you had come to love about them. But regardless, even if you don't like their new music, their old music is still there. Aside from debating the evolution of heavy metal, where it's going, and what defines what true metal is. There are still bands out there, newer bands, still rocking hard, and some playing some good old-fashioned heavy metal that's still fresh and original. Uh, bands like... Bands such as... Ah! Fullbeat! Fullbeat is actually my favorite band. They're a Danish heavy metal band, Inspired by the likes of Johnny Cash, Metallica, Elvis Presley, Suicidal Tendencies, and at least on their old stuff, they had a lot of rockabilly and psychobilly influences. Their current lead guitarist, for the last two albums now, probably at least for one more, unless something changes, is Rob Caggiano. You might recognize his name from The Damned Things. And if not from there, you might recognize him because he was playing guitar with Anthrax for a while. So you know he's cranking out some good leads and soloing like anything and everything you might want to hear. Admittedly, they have had several lineup changes over the years. Actually, there's only two that are still the same from when they started. That would be the drummer, John Larson, and then the vocalist, who is also the rhythm guitar, who is also the overall brainchild lyricist and songwriter for the band, Michael Polson. They have been with the band for, what, what was it, 2000 something, 2001, 2002? They started Volbeat, and before that they were in a death metal band called Dominus. They've been jamming together since they were teenagers. They work so well together, it's ridiculous. And yes, their sound does change in various ways, every couple of albums. But regardless of what those changes are, Volbeat still sounds the same on every single album. Slight changes, but you can still tell that Volbeat is Volbeat is Volbeat. Admittedly, Michael Polson's voice takes some getting used to. 
From time to time, he tends to sound a little like a drunken Elvis. Honestly, I don't know what their following is like in the States. Unless it's been on the radio, you might not have heard of Bowlby before. But in Europe, they are huge! They fill seats because they are rocking out properly, and they don't deviate too far from what metal is, sounds like, and represents. I'm going to go ahead and try to wrap it up here. I have gone on ahead and argued that there is no such thing as true metal. So long as it stands out, has an attitude, and has some good live music. And that music has to be fast, heavy, and loud. I have pointed out that metal has been changing, is changing, and will continue to change. And as a result of that change, the core subgenres and other various other types of subgenres are the result of that. And that is okay. After all of this, I still have one question that remains. What makes somebody a metalhead? For that, I have a checklist. <clears throat> Do you listen to metal of any genre? Disclaimer, doesn't have to be the only type of music that you listen to, but it should probably be your preferred and favorite genre to listen to. Are you passionate about the metal music that you listen to? Has this passion become a defining factor of who you are? Are you knowledgeable about your favorite bands? Disclaimer, I specifically ask you about your knowledge regarding your favorite bands because there's just so much metal and so much of it only offers each person one to five songs that's really good to them. So to know every single one of those minor bands in your life is just exhausting. But you should know about your favorite bands. Does your personality reflect and represent the values and core tenets of the heavy metal attitude, including but not limited to a resistance to mainstream and pop culture, embracing individuality and valuing personal liberties, thinking for yourself and critical thinking, exhibiting an extreme distaste and vehemence toward those who would tell you what to do or who would put you down. Also, being flagrantly and flamboyantly proud of who you are and what you stand for. Granted, this is a very minimal and bare-bones list, but I feel it drives all the major points and keynotes of what makes somebody a metalhead. So if you have to ask yourself, am I metal enough? And if you check out all of these points, you're probably on the right path to being a legitimate metalhead. I want to add one more thing to the list. It's not a necessary one, but just something I would like to see more of. That would be, let yourself listen to new music. Be open-minded to the genres of all kinds of metal. You may not like it, that's cool, but try it out. Everybody has a preference, and that is okay but you never know what treasures you might be missing out on because you thought that it was trash. That's it for today. This was a very fucking long one. Until next time, much love, peace out, namaste, and fucking rock on!